1964, Granada Television brought together a group of seven-year-olds from all over the country and from all walks of life. I'm going to work in Woolworths. I read the Financial Times. They talked about their dreams, their ambitions, and their fears for the future. Everything flew up in the air. It let all landed on my head. For nearly half a century, in a unique, groundbreaking series of films, we have followed their lives every seven years. They are now 56. I don't think you want to go to university if you want to be an astronaut. Watch this. Peter and Neil were childhood friends growing up in Liverpool. Peter went to a comprehensive school and went on to get a history degree from London University. I would like to think that democracy is here to stay. Perhaps we haven't got full democracy. In fact, we probably haven't. It's a, it's a pretty good system. Are you surprised by the way England's being governed? I'm not surprised with the uh, people who are governing us at the moment, no. <coughs> Why? I've even stopped being amazed. <laughs> Why? Why? Well, uh, I don't want to get dragged into party politics, you know, but basically this is the most incompetent, uncaring bloody show we've ever had. After 28 Up, Peter decided not to continue in the film. Why did you pull out? I pulled out because of the responses and the reactions that um, my participation drew in the weeks afterwards, um, particularly in the tabloid press. They decided they were going to portray me as the angry young red in Th Thatcher's England. Well, it's just a principle, you know, that's all there is to I think I was articulating at the time what a lot of people of my age and my background were thinking, and I was an easy target. That part of it, they perpetuate it. But I was absolutely taken aback, I'm completely genuinely shocked at uh, what I saw as the level of malice and ill will directed towards me. Until you've experienced it yourself, you, you can't begin to appreciate how it feels. So now you're back, so why, why did you come back? I feel a lot happier with myself, happier in my own skin. Um, and then, secondly, more specifically, because I want to promote the music and the band I'm in. It was a gold rush town. And what are you called? We're called the Good Intentions. But when he hit that bank, he thought that I'd always played in rock bands, some of them spectacularly bad bands. <laughs> What really got me into this music was um, being exposed to the music of Graham Parsons. Because way back in the day I was a big Elvis Costello fan. And I read an interview with him in which he said, well, I think I'm a good songwriter, listen to this guy, Graham Parsons. It was almost like an epiphany. It was like I was hearing the music I'd been waiting to hear all my life. At once, Carolyn Tedford said she, was good, she, she loved me. And, I, and I'm going to marry, marry her when I grow up. Doesn't appeal to me at all at the moment. For me, what, I'm just gone 20. I haven't even been abroad yet in my life. So there's no way I'm going to get settled down. So, well, what do you want to do? Do you just want to record, me and Pete, to record what we're doing and you'll work round it? I think that's what We were working in an office together and we joined the office band and uh, that's how we got to know each other. So, Gabby, <laughs> and was, it, was it love at first sight? Well, I had a sneaking suspicion that Pete liked me because he was really rude and sarcastic to me all the time, so I thought, mm, I think he's probably quite keen. Um, no, that's not true. And you've always played together since then? Yeah, more or less. I think yeah. we probably stopped for a while when the kids were little. Our boy's 19. Our daughter is 16. And how are they doing? They're, They're great. doing They're really remarkably good. well. Um, our son is in his first year at university. And our daughter is uh, coming up to her GCSEs. 
once you have your own kids, you you have this huge realization of how your own parents felt about you and, and what they did for you. What's the greatest gift a parent can give a child? It's their unstinting love and support and their time. Their time, because I think children value that more than anything. You giving unconditionally, you giving them your time. Well, if I can't be an astronaut, I'd like to be. Um a bridewell sergeant in the police force, like my dad is. So are you under pressure to, to, to get a job? Yeah, I suspect they are from the parents. They keep dropping hints. Teachers are undervalued and underrated. And the whole the system is beginning to crumble. You know, people outside of it don't realise that, but it is. And it's, uh, it's very disillusioning. I left teaching not long after uh, that programme. Um, it, it was actually nothing to do with the programme. Um, that, that was a misunderstanding at the time, I think, which took hold in the press. And I, I'd been planning to leave teaching anyway. And I just didn't see a long-term future in it for myself. And mm. I just thought I had to be honest with myself about that, and honest to the kids I was teaching at the time, and, and uh, move on to something else. Yeah. It might be better to start off just after teaching, Peter studied law and joined the civil service. Gabby also works there. The civil service, despite changes currently taking place, is still comparatively a pretty decent employer. So should you do one of the new ones? What sort of area of the civil service are you in? A uh, department for work and pension. Oh, you've changed the key in that one. I've you? changed the key. It's That's now an F, an F sharp. Sorry right. about that. Oh, marvellous. But you, you got the MP3 in. When Pete writes, he often wants to share that and at a fairly early stage talk about what he's writing. And if it's no good, I have to tell him. And that's quite difficult, isn't it? I'm sure it is, yeah. She was running down roads I didn't know. So when we started work on the album we're doing now, Pete said to me, he said, I've got 120 song ideas I want to go through. And I said, but of those 120, really, we need to get it down to about 10. So I'm going to have to tell you that 110 are no good. How do you take criticism? Well, I think I take it better than I used to. Um, That's not setting the bar very high, hence, though, is no. it? What have been, for you, the best times? Tommy Smith's going the second goal in Rome. Definitely. One of the old times. Which game was that? Which game was that? That was the European Cup final, 1977. That's still up there, by the way. <laughs> but along with what? But, well... Um, getting married for the second time and two ch having two children um, have been hugely significant moments in my life. What do you want out of life? The satisfaction of knowing that I've left some sort of imprint, rather than just lived out my life. You've been gone for so long, Evangeline. No one's looking for you anymore. I hesitate to say Still I think I have made my mark now, because that sounds horrendously vain. But I've created a body of work of which I feel very proud. I feel I've achieved something of lasting value. And in the last two or three years, we have begun to become reasonably successful in terms of critical responses. Uh, we were voted the um, UK's Americana Act of the Year at the British Country Music Awards. You know, from time to time, like anybody else, I'll look back and think, I wish I hadn't done that, or I wish I'd done that differently. But I don't think really life is there to be regretted. Um, life is there to be lived. And I think the most important thing is to feel that by and large you haven't compromised too much, and that you've moved your life on where you want your life to go.